note before I speak to our beautiful friends who will be joining us on the replay. So no worries whether you're here live or you're catching this later on the replay. Here we go. This is day four of our beautiful four part series. So yes, like I said, give me that yes, yes, you guys are doing it. Who can hear me? Candace can hear me. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Let me know over in that chat box that you can see me, hear me, feel me. Um, like I said, welcome to part four of our four part masterclass series on Embodied Ascension 101. Today we are getting into purpose. We are getting into identifying and unlocking your life purpose and really being able to know what that is, right? And what that looks like. All right. So like I said, this is day four. If you have not yet watched the first couple of parts, part one and part two, where we went into um, the physical alchemy and the process of physical ascension, what the physical body is doing as we move through this. And then we went through emotional alchemy and the role of our emotions and our vibration in this process. And then also this beautiful last piece that we did on Friday of mental alchemy, and how we create through our mind and our subconscious, right? Okay, and now we're gonna weave it all together and bring it into the alchemy of soul where we really get to start unlocking our purpose. So a couple of pieces of housekeeping, just make sure for those of you um, who are here live, make sure your chat box is over there and that it says panelists and attendees, right? So everybody can see your comments. And then, um, yeah, get active in that chat box. Uh, talk to each other, connect, right? Interact with me. Those of you that have been here through this whole series, you know that I thrive on interaction. I love your engagement. I love hearing from you all. I love when you answer those questions. Um, and really just have fun and be here, right? Just give yourself to this. That's all I ask. Give yourself fully to this beautiful experience, this beautiful webinar, knowing fully that anything else, right? What are you really here to do? What is it that you were seeking out when you started this series? What were you looking for, right? Because here's the thing, right? A lot of times we go through life and we tend to have received a lot of programming that has us looking for answers externally. And the answers that we seek out externally can only actually usually be found within. So today's conversation is really about unlocking how we actually uncover, how we, because there is actually a formula, right? There's a formula for identifying our purpose in life. But if we have not done the deep inner work, then a lot of times that's the thing that actually sabotages us. Okay. The reason that this conversation is so important to me and I'm so passionate about it is because I spent quite a long time. I spent probably a couple of years chasing success in my business where I felt like I knew what my purpose was but I was doing it from a place of scarcity and survival. And so I wasn't actually able to generate and create and attract in the, the joy of what I was doing, right? It never felt like enough. So give me a yes in those comments if you know that you have spent a lot of your time or efforts kind of no matter what you've been doing, like maybe you were doing something you were passionate about. Maybe you felt like, yeah, like I'm totally in my calling or I really, really like this, but that it still kind of didn't feel like an authentic expression or it still kind of felt like you were like trying to force it or trying to manufacture it, right? And it just, something wasn't aligning. Something didn't feel right, right? Yes, 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 right? Or to the other side of that, it felt aligned and it felt right, but for whatever reason, there was still all these loops and patterns of sabotage. So where are all my saboteurs, right? The ones who won't let themselves succeed because whatever reason, there's some story in there and you've looped around in a bit of that sabotage. And sometimes you're like, I don't understand why I'm sabotaging myself. I love this. I feel like this is what I'm called to do, but for some reason I keep sabotaging it. 
Anybody else, right? Good. Awesome. All right, so I wanna just take a moment here and let me just screen share and bring up our slides. Where is the, oh, right there, sorry. <laughs> okay. All right, so here we go. Okay. Move this down here, present. All right, there we go, our beautiful slides. So just a quick review here, and I'm just gonna bring up the chat so I can continue to see you guys. All right, everybody can see the slides, yes. So a quick little review on our four parts, right? Our four light keys of ascension. In our first webinar, we started off talking about these physical alchemy codes, right? Um, talking about, uh, you know, the process the body is undergoing, the body is ascending, the higher consciousness is descending, we're meeting together to, to live in physicality in 5D, right? Which means that this is the evolution of the old way, right? The old physical form into being able to hold more of our higher consciousness self in physicality, which means, what does that mean, right? What do we know that that means? It means that we're going to be more in tune with our gifts, our purpose, our passions, our abilities as conscious creators of our reality, right? Give me a yes in the comments if you know you want to be a conscious creator of your reality, because that's the choice, right? The epitome of 3D and 5D, the epitome of the third dimension is really that it is, it is, it is, um, is constructed of duality and polarity, right? And it's a playground where we come into to learn how to navigate and direct energy so that we can create according to what we want. All possibilities exist in 3D, right? Polarity exists, which means we can be creating a life of heaven or we can be creating a life of hell. Right? We can be creating the abundance or we can be creating the scarcity. We can create the health or we can create the disease. It's all there. Now, where 3D has gotten distorted is that um, it's kind of been like this program has really taken over of that we don't actually have power over these areas of our life. Right? Give me a yes if you know you have fallen into the trap or the idea or the thought that you don't have power actually over your health, over how much money you're making, over what you're doing, over your creative expression. Like, give me a guess if you have ever felt like you are the effect of life. Like you're just getting dragged around. You're waiting for somebody to tell you what to do. You're waiting for somebody else to tell you what your purpose is. You're waiting for somebody else to give you a piece of paper that says you're qualified to do something, right? Give me a yes if you've experienced that. Because if you are anything like me and you know on some level that you are a fucking powerful divine creator of reality, then it's going to, on some level, bug the shit out of you when you're giving your power away, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. You guys get it. I know you do, right? All the time. Oh, good. David and Patty got in here. Awesome. I haven't seen who came in a few minutes late. And you guys, thank you all for your flexibility um, and, 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 you know, showing up even though I had to move the time. Appreciate you guys. So yes, exactly. See, right? It creates huge self-loathing because there is this divide and this like duality and this dichotomy of like, I'm doing this thing and I'm giving my power away, but that's the loop we get caught in, right? That's where the emotional alchemy comes in, right? Because we get caught in the loop of, no, you didn't miss a lot, just the intro. And we're kind of just doing a review right now, David, of what we've already covered. So that's where we get caught in the loop, right? It's like, we judge it. And then we feel bad about it and then we judge it and we feel bad about it and we get mad at it and we just keep cycling through judging it, feeling bad about it, getting mad about it. And then we see it in other people and we judge it in them and we condemn them and we want to like fight with them and then, right? And it's really all just a reflection of where we're giving our own power away, okay? So what if I told you all that everything you're creating in your reality, everything, all of it, all of it was 
divinely perfectly created by you and your higher self to show you just how powerful you actually are because how could you know how remember what we talked about in our mental subconscious and conscious class right how could you know how powerful you actually are unless you've experienced powerlessness how could you truly recognize the abundance unless you've known what it's like to be without and you've been in poverty and lack and scarcity this is why oftentimes people who are on the brink of death that have a healing or they have a, a near-death experience and then they come out of that and all of a sudden they're like i can't believe i haven't even been living and all of a sudden they go full throttle and they live their life fully expressed but it took a near-death experience to show them they weren't even fucking living, right? Right now in the world, people are desperately clinging to protecting their life. They're so afraid of death. Why are they so afraid of death? Because they're not living, right? Someone who goes through life and fully lives, by the time it comes down, time to go to the next realm and check out, we're gonna be like, cool, man, I packed so much into this, right? It's like, if you go on a vacation, and you don't do anything until the last day of vacation. You're gonna be like, oh my God, I don't wanna go home. But if you've lived fully while you're on that trip, you're gonna be like, okay, this was awesome. And I mean, I definitely loved it, but I'm also ready to go home because I feel so fulfilled by what I got. So you guys, your days, your months, your weeks are the same thing, right? That's what we're talking about today, right? It's what do you wanna be filling your days and months and weeks with so deeply so that you feel so fulfilled and alive. Because I'm going to tell you what, right? You didn't come here to go to that job you hate. You didn't come here to be identified by, you know, a, a chronic illness or a disease or some diagnosis somebody gave you. You didn't come here to be defined by a label of like, uh, you know, father, daughter, mother, sister, teacher, whatever it might be. Right? You all came here to be unique fractals of expression of source and step into a particular expression of that. Right, And so as we've moved through these layers, right, we talked about the physical body and how we're moving through this process of the physical body releasing so it can hold more of the higher frequency. We talked about the emotional ascension, right? Like where we're really starting to release the trauma stories, clear out the emotions, do the subconscious rewiring, do the emotional alchemy, right? We have to feel some of this stuff and move it out so that something new can come in. And then we talked about the mental alchemy. We talked about the processes of how we create, how the subconscious creates, how the conscious creates. And now we're going to weave it all together and talk about how all of these layers and levels and pillars and light keys come together for you to be a unique expression of yourself, right? Give me a yes if you would love to have clarity on who you are and what you are here to do. After yesterday, you can see that clearly now. Of course you can, right? So Lenka, polarity and duality exist in 3D. Does it exist in 5D? It does, but to a smaller extent because moving into a higher state, like we're still in physicality, so there's still going to be dualistic polarity, but it doesn't have to be like this polarity, right? It doesn't have to be this extreme poverty that we're seeing, right? The extreme pain because we're gonna be in a higher consciousness state, we're still gonna have the, the polarities to bounce off of so that we can understand and learn and, and improve and master directing energy, but it doesn't have to be the extremes, okay? Right, cool. Yes, awesome. Yes, yes, clarity, please. Woo, I want it, <laughs> I want it all, right? Awesome. Well, today is where we move um, into really recognizing because the beautiful thing is, when you really truly, so when you free up the density in the physical body and you move those dense emotions and you shift and align the conscious and subconscious minds, what happens is it's like that creates a beautiful open 
pathway, if you will, for soul, for your divinity, your divine knowing to flow in and anchor itself into the root chakra to be expressed then through the solar plexus, through the throat, right? It's not just like these, we just have these energy centers, like they serve a purpose, right? So energy flows down from, from source, energy flows up from the earth. We need it to be moving both ways. Our ideas up here, remember what we talked about on Friday, right? Our, our divine ideas, our inspirations, our imagination, it flows in. And when it's accepted by the subconscious mind, it gets sent to the solar plexus where it then allows it to be birthed into the realm of form so we can experience it. Right now, what I want to know is, would you like to understand how you're doing that instead of like, sometimes you do it and then other times you don't and to be doing it all with precision and intention so that you can feel like you are affecting and creating your life. Right. Which means what do we remember this picture while we're here in this fourth dimensional bridge and this fourth dimensional portal, all possibilities exist. Right. So by doing this with precision and intention, I mean, wouldn't you like to know which earth, which reality, which, which one of these you're choosing to play in instead of getting jerked around? Oh, now you're over here. Oh, look, you had an emotional reaction and you just hopped onto this earth. Oh, look, you just got dragged over to this reality because somebody popped up in your field that wasn't doing what you want and you had a reaction. Oh, look, but now you got some money. So you jumped over to this reality and you feel happy for a moment. But then, oh, look, something made you doubt. And now you're dragged back over here to this lower <laughs> reality. Like, can anybody relate to um, feeling like that? Can anybody relate to feeling like their life is that like you're just getting jerked around and dragged around bouncing around like a fart in a space suit oh boy i don't know right like imagine i wonder if there are farts in space actually hmm. gravity and oxygen and <laughs> but really right so it's like we get dragged around and, and because we've forgotten that we actually have the power, we've forgotten that this life is the school to learn how to control this. Whack-a-mole, exactly. It's all in your head, Linka. Yeah, most of it is, right? And it's like we just boop, 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 boop. Now I'm over here. And we don't recognize that this life is actually the school for learning how to master this with precision, right? And so we sit around getting jerked around, feeling powerlessness, judging ourselves for feeling powerlessness, feeling bad about it. And then we wonder why, you know, we don't change anything and we wonder why we're not fulfilled, right? Which of course you guys remember, right? Our five stages of, uh, you know, alchemy or ascension as we move through. So you guys are in these stages here, right? Of like making a decision and activating your truth. And I just keep coming back to these because I want you all to recognize that these aren't just a one-time thing. This isn't one-time thing you just scoot through and then you just live over here. This is a constant thing that happens in all the areas of your life. And that this one phase right here, this stage of alchemy actually holds like, oh my God, right? It's a huge thing in itself. Like the awareness and the decision and the activation of truth are pretty straightforward. And it's like, boom, 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 boom. But then when we move into the alchemy like that, you have to spend some time there. You can't rush it. It's going to happen divinely and you're going to have to go as deep as you go. And that's where it's easy to get stuck and kind of digress backwards into denial if you don't have, you know, the guidance or the community or the coach around me. And that's why I recommend, like, if you are serious about moving through these and really embodying your truth and stepping into that full liberation and freedom, then I do recommend coming and joining the portal, right? I, I recommend getting the coach getting the mentor, going and doing the deeper work, investing that time, energy, and money into yourself. Because this alchemy stage can be a bitch when you try to do it on your own. I'm not saying that you can't, but why wouldn't you work with a coach or a mentor when it's going to 
more than likely hold you to it and guarantee, right, that you that you get the result. The reason you wouldn't is because you don't yet believe you can have the result or you're afraid of the result, right? Did that for years as well. So just all stuff to think about. We master so we can jump with more precision. Exactly, Lenka, right? Like this isn't just about healing. It's not just about healing. This is about creating realities with intention and precision. It's about being the master of your ship, right? You're the architect of your life and your life is the realities that you are jumping and shifting and moving through. And, and we master ourselves so that we can choose where we wanna go, right? And the more we master ourselves and the more we expand our consciousness, we actually get to start shifting and connecting to realities that are beyond this, this kind of space-time continuum, right? I'm connected with myself, an aspect of my higher, se uh, my higher self that was having an incarnation um, on Andromeda as an Andromedan, right? And I got lots of wisdom and lessons from that. I've connected with aspects of myself in Atlantis, like realms and, and, and incarnations that aren't even in this necessary physical um, you know, the thing that we could travel to physically right now, like I couldn't take my body to Atlantis right now. I couldn't take my body to Andromeda right now, but that's the thing. The more we expand out, the more we can do that with precision and knowing that's the purpose of it, right? Because the more we blend these aspects of ourself, uh, we, pull wisdom in and pull power in, that means we can access any of them consciously. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I love the idea of being able to pull from all the aspects of myself, past lives, ancestors, incarnations of me out here in some other dimension, because how much power do you think I can draw by being able to do that, right? And it's not power to be misused, it's power over my own life and my experience. And I don't know about you all, but that's the kind of power I want, right? I don't want power over other people. I don't have to dominate and control other people, why? Right, when I can create, right, power, when people are inflicting power and control on other people, it's stemming from a, um, a, you know, a dissonance within them, an imbalance within them where they actually feel powerless. So they think if I can get everybody to do what I want, then I'm going to feel powerful. But that just then turns into this pit of, you know, I can never feel powerful enough. And they keep having to do more to others to try to feel powerful. And it doesn't work. It's like a drug addiction, right? It's like, I remember as a drug addict, the first time I got high, I was like, Oh, like this is so good. And then it very quickly became, I need more, I need more, I need more. And then the more was never enough, right? It's very Rothschild, exactly. And for those of you like us in this house who pay attention to what's kind of going on in the world and how we have these ruling elite families, that's what they're doing. They're living in such an inversion of this truth triangle that you see on the screen in front of you. And they're using their power and their energy in a very inverted way. They're misusing their power, which is what the real, the metaphysical um, definition of sin is, right? So they're misusing their power to try to control everybody else because they think it's going to give them what they want and need. When really the only place we find what we want and need is when we master how we use our own power which is that upward flow to harmonize and commune with our divine self and then bringing that same recognition down to be expressed here in the world. So give me a yes if you would like to understand how you are to do that, right? And, and how all of your stuff in life, your experiences, your wounds, your hurts, your struggles are all a part of it. Right. Instead of looking at your life and being like, oh, God, like, oh, like life is happening to me. And, and I say that like in jest because I felt like that for a very long time, you guys. Please get. I felt like I had no power over my life for a very long time. And I felt like life was constantly happening to me. Which brings me to my first piece here of the truth triangle, which is power. This first leg of the, the triangle is power. I felt like I had no power. 
felt powerless. I felt like everything is happening to me, right? This was just stories and limiting beliefs. Some of it was lineage, like, oh my gosh. Um, my father's family comes from Cuba. He, he was the first one born here in New Jersey, in Jersey City. They, my, my, my grandparents fled Cuba when communism took over. Um, and they knew that the communists, um, so it was like Batista got deposed by Castro. And basically they knew that like what, what had already started to happening was that they were, um, you know, coming for people's money. They were taking from, you know, anybody who had any money. So my grandparents fled Cuba. They came to um, the United States. They came to New Jersey and they were very, um, my, my grandmother was not happy to be here. She didn't speak any English. She was very young. Um, she was very, um, from what I gather, it, it, it was a very like stressful and she didn't want to be here. Um, and anyways, through all of that, there was a very real kind of pattern of like feeling powerless that, that was running through the lineage on my father's side. And this is just some of the stuff that I've unlocked through doing this work, right? So they also had come from Spain originally. They were like mercenaries in Spain. And I think they ended up in Cuba because they got paid in land in the new world. I'm not sure of the whole story, but there was a lot of powerlessness, right? And so this, this powerlessness had been repeating in the forms of depression, anxiety, addiction, right? All of these things. So give me a yes also if in your lineage, you can already see even if it's just in physical illnesses, chronic disease, things like depression, any of these things that repeat in your families. Have any of you seen that? Depression, suicide, any particular sicknesses, heart disease, cancer, right? All of these things, we see it, right? We see it repeating, right? Now doctors would tell us it's just genetic and blah, 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 blah. Like, I don't believe that you guys, I don't believe that because, uh, you know, like my husband, right? He, heart attacks run on his mother's side of the family. I don't believe that everybody has to continue to have a heart attack. I don't believe he's going to have a heart attack, right? Because doing the work, when we do the work, we can shift our DNA. We can shift our genes. Epigenetics is studying this and we can unlock our power. That's what we're here to do, right? We are clearing lineage. We are reclaiming our power. So one of the things that I see so much in the spiritual realms and in coaching is people scrambling to unlock their power, but without, from a disempowered place. Oh, that's gold. <laughs> People scrambling to know their purpose from a disempowered place. Now, if your purpose comes from your truth triangle and one of the legs of the triangles is power, how can you know your true purpose if you're doing it from a disempowered place? And when I say disempowered, I mean like I have to save everybody. Uh, this is my core wound and I don't want to heal it. So I'm going to try to heal it and everybody else. And I'm going to go out in my wounded healer thing with all of my not lack of boundaries. And, and I'm not even going to charge money because I don't even think that I'm worth charging money. And I'm going to give away my services. And then I'm going to be like resentful about it because I just don't want to do the work. We see this all the time in that like wounded, ungrounded healer program that's run and i'm not like you guys please get these people are powerful healers they have gifts they have skills they have powerful energy and wisdom that is waiting to be accessed if they would just do that work that they don't want to do right because who are we really serving if we're in our wounded healer mentality like we're not right that's when it gets like icky and it gets toxic and it, it's just it turns into a mess all right. So I just say that as kind of like a, by the way, thing to watch out for. So power. Okay. I'm going to go deeper into these in a second. So let me move through the rest of them. Passion is the other one. Right. And, and here's the other thing I see, right? I see people wanting their passions to be their full purpose. Well, I love crystals. So that means like, this is my purpose, right? Yes. I love crystals too, but are crystals my purpose? Not really. Like, do I use them sometimes in some of my work? Yes, but they're not my purpose. They're just something I'm passionate about. 
And this is where people get mixed up because they run around through their passions thinking that all of their passions have to be part of their purpose when sometimes your passion is just a fucking hobby that you want to go out in the backyard and do. And the way that we identify that is we get clear, which we're going to go into in a minute. Okay. And then the bottom leg of the truth triangle is purpose. So power, passion, and purpose. I'm going to give you guys a formula today for identifying your purpose and the rest will be up to you, right? Because a piece of that formula comes from doing the deeper work. So you're going to have to take that. And of course, cause we have 90 minutes today, you guys, right? Like I can only give you so much, give you so much in 90 minutes and you all know, right? Like if you're ready to just go deeper and unlock it all, that's when it's going to be kind of time to come and join me in the portal where we are going to be spending weeks on these purpose formulas and doing the work to unlock them. Okay. So let's get into it. All right. So you guys kind of get the idea of the truth triangle before we come to power. Just give me a yes in the comments. If you feel like you get the idea that of that power, purpose, and passion really being like your triangle of power, your triangle of truth, right? And it's where you can really draw power from when you're clear on what those things are. Cool. Yes, yes, yes. Awesome. All right. So the path to our power. Our power. Our power. <laughs> if you all truly knew how powerful you are right now, have you guys heard that Buddha quote? <laughs> I know Buddha quotes on the internet, right? Anyways, there's a quote that gets around um, that's attributed to Buddha where I think it's Buddha, um, where it's something about like when you recognize, um, you know, the, the perfection and all of it, you'll just throw your head up and laugh at the sky. That's how I feel about the moment we actually move into like a full recognition of our power. There's this, just this, it's this like, like you will look back on all of the times in your life where you felt powerless and you will just chuckle because you will see how <laughs> disillusioned you are. <laughs> and the thing is, is when you're truly in your power, you no longer judge it because you understand that those pieces and those events and those moments contributed to you standing in your power. So you'll look back on it and just chuckle. And that's what I do, you guys, regularly. When I look back, so a little story, um, a few things, right? Like when I look back on the first few years of being a coach and being a writer and being you know, a business owner, I was so frustrated <laughs> because I, couldn't understand why I knew that I had gifts and I knew that I had a calling, but I couldn't seem to make it work. I couldn't understand it. So I spent a lot of time in frustration, in powerlessness, crying, wanting to quit days where I would just lay there and be like, forget it. I'm just not going to do it because I felt like a failure and rejection when I would, you know, I would, I would launch stuff. I would offer stuff that I felt was really in alignment and I'd have nobody there or I'd get like one person. Um, and then I would feel like rejected and I would feel upset and I would spiral around feeling powerless. And when I look back on these moments, when I look back on myself sitting in that frustration, it's just like I chuckle because I'm like, oh God, like if I had known how powerful I actually was, right? And it's like, I know it now. So it's beautiful because I had those experiences, right? Because I tasted powerlessness that now when I'm standing in and feeling true personal power, it's like knowing extreme thirst and getting that glass of water. Knowing hunger and getting that food. And there's just something in that experience that makes us 
relish and appreciate so deeply that thing, right? So this, this personal power that I've obtained through my journey is now more valuable to me than anything, right? And so you better believe I will love it and I will cherish it and I will protect it. I will prioritize it and do whatever I need to do so that nobody can take it away from me, right? That's where we get ownership from. So can you guys start to see how like, this journey that we're on collectively in the world right now, we're being pushed into this, right? So we awaken to our true identity, right? We remember that we're powerful creators of reality. We restore ourselves to this knowing by releasing the limiting beliefs, right? The distortions that stem from our wounds and trauma. We free ourselves from the self-judgment, the guilt, the shame, and we clear the patterns those inherent limiting circumstances. Like how many people do you know right now or have you witnessed right now? How many times, let's get, let's get honest for a second. How many times in your own lives have you caught yourself telling a money story because that's the way your parents lived? Hmm? Let's hear it. Let's hear it in the chat box. How many times have you heard yourself telling a story about your relationship status because of all your ex partners were whatever way. Oh, well, my parents were poor immigrants. Oh, well, my parents were this, my grandparents were this. My great grandparents were slaves. So I have to still act like I'm oppressed. My great grandmother was murdered. So I still have to act like I'm not safe in the world. I was abused as a child, so I still have to act like an abused victim. Guys, I'm calling them all out, right? And I don't care, right? Because I'm done caring about upsetting people and I care more about anchoring in truth. And the truth is that is that it does not fucking matter what our lineage is. It does not matter if last month I was starving and homeless. I can still start creating my reality right now. It doesn't matter. I'm proof. I was a homeless, strung out drug addict seven years ago. And I know, I get it. I know that we like to, oh, but it must be because you had X opportunity or you had X privilege or you had X. No, no. All that thinking does is give our power away. How about instead of comparing and looking at what the thing was that allowed somebody else to move themselves out, we start recognizing that what the thing was that allowed that person to move themselves out of X circumstance, we recognize it was something in their thinking and their mindset and their belief system that allowed it to happen. How about we start putting that out to the world? Instead of writing everything off, well, it must be because your parents were rich. You must just be lucky. Oh, you were born with a silver spoon. So that's why that was easy for you. And again, I did it for a long time, right? I looked at people who were born into wealth and I was like, of course, success was easy for you. You didn't have to clear lack and scarcity. Bullshit. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what they had to clear or not clear. Their experience doesn't affect mine. Doesn't matter if my fucking grandparents were fresh off the boat from Cuba, couldn't speak a lick of English and had no money. It doesn't fucking matter. I get to create my reality. It doesn't matter if my dad believes money doesn't grow on trees and you have to work hard and earn it. It doesn't matter what he believes. I get to choose whether or not I wanna consciously continue to create my experience based on his and my mom's and my grandparents and my past lives. Doesn't matter if I was starving in a past life and ragged and dirty and poor, I don't have to keep living that. Do you guys feel this? Speaking from programming, yeah. Like, can you guys start to see where in your lives you're just writing stuff off because it's what your parents did and what your grandparents did and what your lineage has been through and that it's all just continuing to play out? Do you guys see it? Give me a yes if you see it. <laughs> Lenka, boom, right? 
And it's twofold, twofold, right? So I'm gonna tell you guys a story in a minute. Traditions can be beautiful, right? But, but like they can also be an anchor to this bullshit, <laughs> right? And then there's all this like toxic programming around bait breaking them. And it's like, well, really we have to start assessing like, does this actually serve me? we celebrated our ancestors like our heroes, but we can be, that's exactly it, right? We can pull from their wisdom. Yes, we can. We can honor their experience because their experience contributed to who we are, but we do not have to take their fucking word and their beliefs as bond because there's too much of that, right? They lived in a different time and we don't have to continue to live. So quick story to illustrate this because I love stories to teach. You guys know this, right? So story time. So there's the family and there's the mom and her three daughters. And every Christmas they make the ham for Christmas. And every Christmas mom goes out and gets the ham and they're in the kitchen and they're prepping everything. And mom takes the ham out. And the one day, you know, the, the nine-year-old daughter, she's like old enough now. She's been seeing her mom do this, you know, several times a year, every year helping her. And she says, mom, as she's watching her mom, cut the ends off the ham, put the ends on top of the ham, place it in the pan and place it into the big oven. Mom, why, why do you cut? The, I always see you do that when you make a ham. Why do you cut the ends off the ham? And the mom says, well, it just tastes better that way. And that's just the way we've always done it. And it just tastes better. Like my grandma, my mom did it that way. Your grandma and her mom did it that way. And it's just, it's just the family tradition that we just do. Okay, cool. But I really want to know, like, why? Well, why does it make it taste better, right? Nine-year-old, she just wants to know why. So she's like, but why? Can Maybe, can we ask grandma, like, what, what it does that it makes it taste better? You know, intuitive little kid, right? So they call up grandma and have a conversation with grandma. And, you know, the nine-year-old asks, well, grandma, like, why? Mom says that, you know, you just always did it that way. And your mom always just did it that way. So is that, like, something that comes from, you know, our culture? Like, why do we do that? Why does it make the ham taste better? And the grandma's like, well, we just always did it that way. And now this family happens to also, the great grandma happens to be alive. So the nine-year-old says, well, can we call great Nana, great Nana, great grandma and ask her? So they do, they call her up and she's like, you know, hundred years old and they ask her and the great grandma who lives back in, we'll just say Italy, right? She lives back in Italy. So they don't see her that often. And grandma was the first one that came over and left Italy. So she then, they asked great grandma why, why it makes the ham taste better to cut the ends off. And great grandma says to them, are you all still cutting the ends off of the ham? We only did that in my family because we were so poor. We only had one pan. The pan was square. The ham didn't fit, but we didn't want to waste any of it. So we cut the ends off so the ham would fit in the square pan, stack the ends on top so it all got cooked and we had enough food. And we only got to have the ham once a year. So we didn't want to waste any of it because we were that poor. So... <laughs> I love that story for obvious reasons, but I would love to hear from you all. Like, what did you get from that story, right? Does, does it feel empowering to be continuing to cook a ham a certain way that's actually rooted in scarcity and poverty? We just keep doing it because we don't even know why and we never stop to question why. Does that feel good or powerful? Right? And so while that story may be funny and about a ham and cooking, where else are we doing that in our lives? Like where else are we just continuously like making just, oh, I'm just gonna put that away and save for a rainy day when really we wanna just go enjoy what we're, what we're earning or invest in our consciousness but I'm just going to save for a rainy day because that's what my great depression era grandparents instilled in us was to save my money for a rainy day because just in case, 
right? Like where else are we doing this? Yeah, same as the monkeys that beat on the new ones without knowing why. Real talk, you guys. So power, you all get to choose. Do you wanna live in power or what? Okay, passion. So here's the beautiful thing about passion, right? When we start mixing up, confusing our passion, like I said, confusing our passions with our purpose, it can get all jumbled, right? Our purpose, I'm gonna to get to this more in a minute, but our purpose is born from our own experiences, right? Our passions are the things that light us up. Now, another little story, I had a client who I was working with a couple months ago who had some beautiful skills and passions as a sound healer and she channels light language and she sings and when she does it it's all just it moves energy and you feel it and she plays all these instruments um and it's beautiful right these things were her passions she was playing a story of judging her passions as you know silly or mediocre or not things that could actually be used to create a flow of abundance. So she was playing the story of, well, I can't get paid to do what I love. Has anybody ever told themselves that or bought into believing that? Well, if, if I love doing it, I can't get paid well to do it. Like that's just, uh, that's some nonsense, right? Like that ain't fucking... <laughs> How many people, how many of you, <laughs> exactly, Patty was taught that from childhood. You have to go and work and work has to be like, oh, and slave grid and you have to be sweat and tears and it's gotta be struggle and strife to be able to justify that pay. <laughs> Lenka, I was just thinking about that. That's the synchronicity. Of course, because that's why you're here. Whoops, hitting the keyboard and jumping ahead. Right? Here's the beautiful thing about our passions, okay? A lot of times our judgment on our passions are like anchored into failed expectations, guilt, fears, right? And so when we release these things, the failed expectations, the guilt, the fears, the programs, we start to see what our passions truly are. And also, the thing about our passions, is that it's often the things that come easiest to us, right? And we're so programmed to think that if it comes easy to us, nobody values it. <laughs> so I would love to hear, so like I was telling you, um, my client, she, uh, she was, you know, had all these beautiful gifts and she was minimizing them because she didn't believe like they could, they could serve her or do anything or that anybody even wanted them. And I was like, are you kidding me? Right. So through the work we were doing through the clearing and we were doing some deep, you know, subconscious reprogramming and doing the trauma healing methods and the emotional alchemy through doing those, she started putting herself out on TikTok, right? And now she has this beautiful following. She's making a community. She's got people that are coming to her and she's starting to be able to see, oh my God, my passions and my gifts are actually helping people. And her next step is gonna be to monetize that. So guys, it gets to be that simple, right? But we have to know, we have to be able to get crystal clear on who we are, who you are not who everybody else told you you had to be, right? And I put Tesla here because I, he's just one of my favorites and somebody I love connecting with on the quantum realm because to me, he's like the epitome of somebody who's just so like, he didn't even care, to, almost to a fault, right, about life. And he just wanted to bring his ideas and his things to form that, you know what I mean? He also got like screwed over and taken advantage a bunch of times because perfect example, right? Like couldn't master living in the 3D realm with boundaries and, and, and um, you know, being able to stand in knowing to be able to navigate this world. And that's what I believe we're here to do, you guys. 
to be able to be the bridge between the divine and the human, be able to live in it without being that starving artist, right? The artwork and I'm not good enough. Yeah, exactly. It's time to burn down this fucking grid of like, you can't make money doing what you love. Bullshit. You actually can't make money if you're not doing what you love. You might make a little bit of money, but the hustle and the cost of it is going to be so great that you're not going to be happy. So the real statement is you can't make enough money to justify not doing what you love. <laughs> right? You can't make enough money to justify continuing to do what you hate. Because the cost of doing what you don't love just for the sake of money will be greater than anything else. It will be your health. It will be your happiness. It will be your joy. And it will be your connection to the divine. So it doesn't matter if you love baking cupcakes or gardening or connecting with other people. There is a path for you to be able to do that and be the expression of that and for abundance to flow to you from some avenue, whatever it might be. The thing is, is that when you're in this kind of tunnel vision, you can't even begin to see what that might be. So like, remember my client, right? Remember what I'm telling you is like at, uh, six months ago, she thought like nobody wanted her skills and her gifts and now she has this beautiful community and this following on TikTok of people who love her songs and her videos and her singing bowls and her sound healings and her next step is going to she couldn't even see six months ago she couldn't see that she could potentially be monetizing something that was just flowing through her in a light language song she couldn't even perceive that because it was through the step over here, over here, over here, and over here, standing where she is now, where she has people listening to her, coming to her, watching her videos, that she's like, oh my God, this is actually possible, right? Do you guys get it? You see? Yes, 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 right? All right. So moving into the path to purpose, okay? The bottom of the truth triangle, right? Purpose comes from your wisdom right? You guys, your wisdom comes from healed pain. Your traumas minus emotions equals wisdom. So again, I see too many people trying to unlock purpose without being willing to do the healing, without being willing to neutralize the trauma. And what happens when we try to do that is we get this like one little piece of the purpose, one little surface piece, which doesn't go deep enough to ignite our why. Right? It doesn't go deep enough to ignite our why. So for me, before I, another story, before I understood, or I'm sorry, before I um, started doing my deeper healing work, my E4 and my emotional alchemy, and really devoting myself to this over the course of like months, you guys, this isn't an overnight process. I always knew that I wanted to, you know, do things along the lines of personal empowerment and authenticity, um, you know, and, 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 and reconnecting with the truth of who we are as creators. I knew, I, I knew that I did up here but I hadn't yet embodied it, right? So when I was trying to teach it because I knew it was what I was passionate about and I knew that that's what I wanted to teach, but I hadn't yet embodied it because guess what? The trauma was still in there. So this couldn't become embodied. And I was trying, it just wasn't working. It felt off. It didn't feel aligned and I would sabotage myself and I wouldn't show up and like it, told you guys, right? I would offer things and then things would happen. Then I would feel rejected. And then I would crawl into a hole for a week and hide. And then I'd have to crawl out again. And I had all these stories playing out that weren't even accurate. And I was looping in this fucking sabotage, you guys. And it was exhausting. 
It was exhausting. And I didn't know at the time that it was because I was still operating in a trauma place. I didn't know, I couldn't see it. And it wasn't until I recognized that and I started doing the deeper work and letting myself just go in there and just move like on earth at all, doing the processes on myself, it started to drop in more and more and more and more and more and more because guess what? You guys, guess what? I cleared past lives where I had been held and forced to use my powers and use my gifts against my will and I was forced to use them for bad. And I didn't want to, and I felt trapped and I felt powerless, right? And there was torture and there was all this pain and all this suffering. Other past lives where I did willingly use my power for bad and I misused it and caused pain and regretted that. Other past lives where I was living in such lack and scarcity and poverty and pain, powerlessness, the, all of these things carrying over into this life where I continue to create powerlessness and stuckness and feeling pain, right? And until I got in there and I started recognizing that the roots of these distortions and these programs and these traumas, I wasn't able to fully understand why I was so called to this, this, this work. Right? Why was I so called to being a, a, an anchor for truth? Right? Because I had spent so many lifetimes in not truth, in distortion, in powerlessness, in getting dragged around, right? Going from reality to reality, not understanding how I was creating because that's what life is. Life is the masterclass of learning how to be a conscious creator. We're like in our master's degree level program of life right now, understanding how to become conscious creators. Yeah, see, right? I just wanna be a wizard. And that's the thing, right? How do you know that? Because you went through a session and you went through the process that unlocked your power and your purpose. You guys, this is real, it's real, right? So let's talk about your purpose formula, right? This is how you turn your sufferings into triumphs. So your purpose formula is like your greatest triumphs, the, the things that you have overcome. So what I would love to hear in the comments is what have you overcome in your life? And if you haven't overcome it yet, well then, damn, that's your wake up call to get in there and do the work to overcome it so that it can weave itself into being your purpose, right? What have you overcome in past lives? Death, torture, suffering, oppression, slavery, poverty, scarcity, addiction. What, what, what is it? Drop them in the comments. Let's go. Hear it. Nail it down. Let me hear it. Elena, so many things. What? Tell me. Guilt, mm, I like it. Get in there, get juicy. Right? You guys, plus passion. So your greatest triumphs, plus your passions, plus your skill set. And if you know you haven't yet triumphed or there's more to overcome, awesome. Let's do it. All right, your passions. If you're still operating under what you think everybody else wants you to like and love and be, then you're not going to be clear on who you are, right? Your passions come from, excuse me, your passions are going to come from who you are, right? Your values, your commitments equal your passions. So good, now come and tell me, what are some of your passions, you guys? What do you love? What triggers you when you see somebody else not getting it because you just know and it comes easy to you? What do you love? Is it truth? Is it learning? Is it growth? What is it? Tell me. 
plus your skill set. What skills do you have? You guys, what are the things that come so easy to you that when someone else doesn't do it, you don't get it? Right? Like for me, it's this, it's fucking evolution. It's growth. It's healing. When someone is unwilling to look at their stuff and grow and evolve and expand, I am fucking stumped. Ask, you guys can ask my husband how many times I stop and I'm like, I don't understand. Like when someone just doesn't, when someone's triggered and they don't want to embrace the trigger and grow, I don't get it. I don't get it. Right? So let's read some of these. Guilt, codependency, overcame my fear of dying by fully con consciously remembering my last death in a past life, right? Addiction and insecurities, yeah. Nature, alchemy, herbalism, stoicism, personal empowerment, endurance, health, right? So the passion, skill sets. So love, giving love to those who are in need. Let's hear some more passions, you guys, right? And if you don't know what your passions are, that's where your work is. So this is a big mirror, you guys. It's showing you. Do you have some stuff to overcome? Skill set in nature. Dance and letting go. Right? What are those? Who are you? What, and this is where passions, right? You want to unlock your passions? Go do the Soul Blueprint Alchemy Workshop. There's a whole workshop that you can go do. I'll send you guys the link in the email if anybody's interested in that, right? Or, right, you come and do the portal. We're going to be unlocking all this stuff real time. Skill set. Do you need to go learn more skills, right? Art helping others building. Because, yes, there are more skills. It's like I am getting a certification right now because there was this whole skill set I wanted to learn, right? I wanted to have more things to pull from to be able to support people in truly and deeply healing, right? Reiki, boom, that's a skill, right? Uh, so skills can go twofold, right? Some of them are going to be in the form of, hey, I need to go learn how to be a business owner. That's a skill set. Hey, I need leadership. Hey, I need organization. Hey, I want to go learn how to uh, make spreadsheets. The, all those are great, right? Reiki, yoga teacher training, right? There's different things that maybe we get a certification for, but don't discount your natural skills as well. Like, are you intuitive? Are you clairvoyant? Are you clairaudient? Are you claircognizant? Are you clairsentient? Right? Can you channel? Maybe you can just feel into people and know what they're feeling. <laughs> so I have things that come easily and I'm good at, but I wouldn't consider them passions. So, well, okay, right. And that's somewhere where we can look at too. That might be more of a skill set. Like you have things that you're good at but they don't light you up. If that's, if I'm hearing you correctly, Patty, right? So Patty, what are the things that light you up? Beautiful. So you started to draw for others and yourself, right? Now the thing is, right, you guys, here's where we get jammed up because we start working on this. Oh, I'm going to get my purpose formula. Cool. So I'm going to look at my triumphs and I'm going to see my passions and I'm going to see my skill set. There's my purpose, but I don't yet actually believe that I can live my purpose. Give me a yes if you know that you have the potential to doubt that you can actually live your purpose. So maybe you dabble a little bit, not really anymore. Cool. But you don't actually let yourself do it. Because if you, I'm going to tell you guys straight up, right? If you fully believed you could be living your purpose, you would be. You would be. <laughs> if you fully believed, because remember, conscious and subconscious, when the conscious mind fully believes something, it implants it into the subconscious and the subconscious sends it down to the solar plexus to be birthed into the world as your experience. 
<laughs> well, it shifted yesterday. I think it's taking a minute to manifest. Of course, because it does. You guys, please get to, you're, you're doing this work here, right? Like, so again, right? As you do, so if, okay, to kind of put it into perspective, right? For, if you come and you do the portal, we're gonna be working together over eight weeks, right? A weekend and eight weeks. That weekend is going to kick things off and you're going to have some like massive breakthroughs and shifts and deep healings. That doesn't mean that Monday morning you're going to wake up and your entire physical reality is going to have shifted because that would send your mind crazy, right? If you went to bed and woke up in a different reality, your mind would might break because you'd be like, oh my God, how did I get here? What happened? Right? And you'd spend so much time trying to figure it out. It just wouldn't work. However, what would happen is you would be starting to shift through realities gradually. And it would look like time was passing and you would then find yourself by the end of the eight weeks in a very different reality from where you started, right? But it does take time. That's the whole point of being here in physicality, you guys. When we signed up for it, we knew that it was going to take time to manifest our things, but we forget that and we get impatient and we want it now because we think that, you know, not having it means something. Oh, beautiful. All right. I feel like I've aged out of my purpose. Interesting, Patty. Very interesting. I would love to hear more on that. Why do you feel like you've aged out of your purpose? Because if it's really your purpose, how could you age out of it? Yeah, I know, boo. My, my mind almost broke yesterday. So Lenka, I do, but I don't want to do the work yet. But I will. I feel like I'm ready, but it's still not my time. What makes you say it's not your time, Lenka? Do you feel that truly or is that coming from your mind? Because it may not be your time and it may be your time. But if you're here then I'm wondering why you think it's not your time. So true, boom. There's that doubt for sure. Awesome, you guys. And I really wanna just recognize you guys for your honesty and vulnerability too, as you're answering these questions and just interacting here. I just wanna say I recognize and appreciate you guys for that. I used to dance, I'm 65 now. Okay, so I get that, right? There's definitely um, pieces of that, right? So maybe you're not going to go out and get a gig as a, a professional dancer on Broadway. I'm not sure what kind of dance you do, but however, is it possible, Patty, that your purpose is something even greater and dance is just a part of that? Like maybe you'll be pulling from your dance knowledge and your love of dance, but your purpose may be something that you haven't even thought of yet. Is that possible? Because I know a lady who is uh, going on her onto her seventies, and we were chatting the other day. Um, she she's also we're in a in a program together. And she was telling me how it's all coming together for her. She had done all these different things, acting classes and singing class and all these different things. And she always thought she was just doing them for like fun. She wasn't sure why she actually had went out and she just knew she enjoyed learning it and doing it while she was doing it in her younger years. Now she's at this place where she's doing all of this deep healing work that she's doing. She's redefining herself activating her dormant DNA, right? Going through all of these spiritual shifts and awakenings and healings that she's now in a place at 70 where she's like, I could do anything with all of this. And she's thinking about putting together, you know, like a, a, a one woman show that she would then present that's going to take people on a journey into like awakening to their truth. So it's like, she's, do, do you see that? Like, right. And she never, if 30 years ago, you had told her that that's what she'd be doing at 70, she probably would have been like, yeah, right. So you see, yes. Yeah, stepping stone into a new purpose. Okay. Okay. Patty, I see you. 
<laughs> I see you, Elena. I'm still searching for my purpose and know through healing all this dense, dense shit, I will find it. Now it's teaching my family how to heal with me. Well, yeah. And I mean, that's part of it too, right? Because you guys are going to pass this on to your families a hundred percent, hundred percent, right? Because through coming and continuing this work, it's like, it will unlock. You're going to pass it on to your families. Your families are going to take this into a new way of being. They're going to change anyway. Even if you don't actively teach them how to do it, just by you doing it deeper and deeper and deeper, it's they're, they're going to do it too. It just happens that way, right? Because of the nature of what I'm doing, it's shifting my entire family dynamic. It just happens that way. Right? Elena, you want to come unlock your purpose? Let's do it. Let's get your butt in the portal. Right? And age is not a barrier to your passion. Exactly, Linka. So I feel like I'm doing the work, but not on a level I want to. I need to spring my, spread my wings more, but I'm still in a cocoon. Well, and maybe, but do you think, so my question for you, Lenka, would be, <clears throat> does any part of you in true honesty feel like it's time to come out of the cocoon and you're resisting it? Are you afraid to come out of the cocoon? Or do you feel like you need to be in the cocoon longer. And when you say, I feel like I'm doing the work, but not on a level I want to, what's stopping you? Because if you're in the cocoon, that's actually the perfect time to come and do the work on a deeper level. Scared shitless. All right, Lenka, come on, let's jump. <laughs> right, let's jump. <laughs> you know, it's like skydiving. You guys, when I went up in that plane, the first time I went skydiving, I was terrified. I was confident. Excuse me. Not sure what's going on out there. <laughs> I was confident when I went up in the plane, but when I got up there, I was confident when they were like doing my, my suit and all that. Then we get up into the plane and the guy comes over and he's like, all right, you're gonna strap, strap me to his front, right? He's behind me. They strap you all together because it was my first time. I was like, oh my God, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. I don't, I can't jump out of a plane. Oh my God, I can't jump out of a plane. I can't jump out of a plane. I can't jump out of a plane. <laughs> Guess what? I was strapped to the guy. So he fucking went ahead and we did it and we left and it was the best thing I ever did. It was the best thing I ever did. Yeah. I keep getting shit thrown at me while I'm in the cocoon and it keeps rattling me. You guys, that's what's happening right now. I'm just so universal from a universal law. And this is the last thing I'm going to say. I'm going to make sure you guys have this formula. And then we're going to chat about, um, you know, what your favorite part was here today and how you're going to go start unlocking your purpose. And then I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about the portal um, if you are interested in continuing this work now. So, oh, I just totally like lost what I was going to say. Um, oh, being in the cocoon and universal law. So from a universal law perspective, you guys, what is happening right now, this great awakening, this great unraveling, right? Everything that's happening right now is that the universe is trying to show us and shake anything out that is not in harmony. There is a universal law of harmony. And when things get out of balance, we have to come back to harmony. When we go too far into chaos, we have to come back into order, right? So just the ebb and flow of consciousness and universal law. So right now we're being invited to take stock in our lives, in ourselves, in our relationships. And we are being asked to look at and let go of anything that is not in true harmony, anything that is keeping us from creating harmony right? Am I creating harmony? Am I creating love? Am I creating peace? Am I creating abundance? What am I living in? Because that's what we put out. And it's not what I think I'm living in. Because there's a lot of people who think they're living in positivity and abundance and truth and alignment. And underneath, there's a toxic cesspool of unhealed shit. Now, that's not a judgment, you guys. It's not a judgment. They're not bad or wrong. It's just uh, 
paradigm away a grid that has taken root right and it's it's we cannot truly step into 5d until we get really authentically vulnerable and start admitting i'm not as you know together as i thought i'm not as healed as i thought i'm not as positive as i thought i'm not as abundant as i thought i've been kidding myself i've been lying to myself i'm ready to get true and uproot the shit that is keeping me anchored in the disempowerment. Only we can decide for ourselves, right? We have to stop worrying about what everybody else is doing because here's the thing, whatever they're doing is perfect for them. And I know that that's hard. I know, I know to the ego and the trauma response and the part of us that is in trauma and wants to control, I know that it's hard to consider that what somebody else is doing is perfect for them, especially when we judge what they're doing as harmful to them or us. But the thing is, is when we truly, truly, truly do the work and release the trauma over a period of time and let ourselves go deep, we recognize that nothing can actually harm us because we're not this body. They're not this body. The drug addict on the corner is just as beautiful and divine as that person over there wearing 10 masks and a face shield, as is the person over there meditating on the lotus flower and everybody in between. The person who's ultra triggered and screaming at somebody with a tape measure on a beach because they're not six feet apart is just as divine as the person over here who's keeping their peace and gets it and is choosing to create their own reality. We're all in that. We're all having the experience we need to have, whatever that looks like. And there's a level of like getting that on an intellectual level. And then there's a level of getting that on an experiential level. And when we get that on an experiential level, it's fucking full liberation. Because if you guys can even begin to imagine what it feels like to stop making everybody else wrong or right and just let them live their, their peace. That's not to say that we don't care about things. It's not to say that we don't take a stand. Sorry, guys, this thing keeps popping out. It's not to say that we don't take a stand for things that are important to us, right? I, I don't not say things that are important to me. Like there are certain causes politically with children, stuff like that, that are important to me. And it's important to me to speak my truth on certain things. But what I don't have to do is make the people who disagree with me wrong because I'm not God. I'm not here to judge and condemn. It's just not what I'm here to do. But when we're in trauma, we do that because it's how we protect ourselves. Because I can tell you that if, if I could have known in my twenties, what I know now, and if I could have had the healing then that I've had now to be able to understand that I don't have to protect myself by making everybody else wrong and right. And that actually my power stems from a source that is beyond anyone or anything in this world. And truly recognizing that and being able to just let other people live because I realized that I'm the creator of my reality. If I could have known that 15 years ago, I would fucking paid anything. I would have paid anything to know that in my twenties, but you know, I had a different path and that's okay too. Right. Everything in my path led me here where I understand it. And that's why this is my purpose work. <laughs> that's why my purpose is spreading and anchoring in truth and expanding consciousness in others because I lived in a contracted state for so long. If I hadn't, I wouldn't be able to stand in expanded consciousness like I am now and be able to be a teacher of it and someone who can guide people through these processes to heal, right? So it all served, it worked out perfectly, but there's still that part of me that's like, damn, if I had known this back in my 20s, what would I be doing by now? I'd be like teleporting by now if I had known this 15 years ago. <laughs> right? But the question, the, the, the point is, is we just start now and we start where we are and we surrender to it. And we look at that thing we're scared to do and we just fucking do it. 
and we leap. That's why I only work with people who are like 10 out of 10 committed because I'm not interested in dragging anybody off the cliff, right? I'm only interested in the nature of the work. Here's the thing you guys, and, and before we go into talking about what the portal looks like, the nature of working with me is that there is no going back. You can't unring the bell, right? So why would I drag someone into that who's not truly ready and willing and able to like fucking just be like, I'm so ready to like me when I, I was just so desperate and so ready for freedom and liberation and power that it didn't matter. If you had told me to like shave my head and go stand naked on a corner, I would have done it. And I was so like defeated that like my mind couldn't even argue or question or think that I knew better anymore. And it's like, I'm not saying, <laughs> I'm not saying that I want people to be so beaten down by the time they find me. I mean, I hope they don't have to be that beaten down by the time they find me, but they have to be that committed. They have to be in that moment of decisive commitment of like, I am fucking doing this because I can't live one more second giving away my power. <laughs> can't put the genie back in the bottle, right? Exactly. You guys get it. I know you do. That's why I love you all. All right, so tell me, you guys, whoa, can you guys believe this has been an hour and a half? Like, did we just like open a portal or what? Collapse time? All magic does come with a price. I wanna know, what was your favorite part of today? What was your favorite part of this whole series? Did you like physical? Did you like mental, the mind stuff? Did you like the emotional stuff? Did you like this purpose conversation? Do you feel fired up? Are you ready to go sit down and think about your purpose formula? Are you ready to sit down and think about your triumphs and your passions and your skill set to make that fucking statement of purpose, who you are and what you're here to be? Are you ready to go dig deeper into what your passions truly are? Let's hear it. I like listening to what a, oh, what a badass coach my boo is. Yeah. <laughs> you like that the purpose formula. And my favorite was the emotional. Quite a few of you resonated with the emotional, which is awesome because that's the work. That's the work. So you guys can keep answering there in the comments. And I just want to talk to you a little bit about, because this is our last one. Okay. So just to set you guys up for success, because you guys know, right? Like I have told you, this is a tiny foundation. This is the fraction. This is the beginning of the journey that I've given you. I've given you a foundation to build on. All right, but now go forth, fly free, but the work is now up to you. What matters now is what you are doing in your daily life, right? Are you connecting to your heart? Do you have a practice, some sort of connection, spiritual practice? Do you have the tools to be able to deal with your triggers and your emotional upsets when they happen? Are you able to use them as reflection, right? Can you get into self-love and compassion and hold these frequencies truly? Not like, okay, I'm in the self-love, but inside you're really fucking angry and you're not admitting it. Okay, yeah, I'm in compassion for you. Love and light, namaste, when really you wanna tell them to go fuck themselves, right? That's not compassion, that's passive aggressive bypassing. <laughs> Right. And I laugh because, you know, everybody's done it. Right. Whatever. We don't want to judge it. But all of these comes as a result of doing the work. Okay. Grounding, nature, rest, salt baths, light baths. All of these things are going to be beautiful tools to support you. However, the grounding, the nature, the rest, the light baths, the salt baths can't do the work for you. It's the day to day that's hard, always gets knocked off my seat. I'm ready to make this my lifestyle. Yes. Ooh, yeah, girl. You know, I'm ready and waiting to welcome you with open arms because I love your vibe. <laughs> So if you guys know you're ready, like really do it, right? Community and connection is a big piece of that. That's where, right? You have the free Facebook community. I'm going to give you guys all the links here again. And then of course, come and join me for the portal. 
which I'm so excited about. All right, so you guys, I wanna talk to you a little bit about um, what the portal looks like. I'm just gonna give you all some links. You can take off this screen share for a minute. If you're not in the Facebook community, please come and join us over there. I'm going to start doing um, like a weekly live stream in the Facebook community just as an added place for um, creating connection and anchoring you know, this truth and these conversations into the collective for everybody. So that Facebook community is going to be a big place for that. So if you're not there, come and join us there. There's the link for that. And I'm gonna to talk to you all a little bit about the portal and then I'm gonna give you all the link for booking a call if you feel like the portal is right for you. Oh, also, sorry. Let me just put these links up first and then I will talk. So this is your replay link. Guys, save these links and bookmark them. All four of these sessions are in that link, Ascension 101, um, for you all to revisit. They're gonna live there forever. It may eventually come down and become a course but you guys have access to it as the people who joined from the get-go, my gift to you. And then here's the link to book a call if you're interested in coming and doing the portal. So a little bit about the portal, you guys, because I just want to give you guys the full picture. Like you heard me say that there's no going back, right? You can't put the genie bag in the bottle. You can't unring the bell. And the portal really, really truly is for those of you that are like 10 out of 10, like I am ready to take 100% responsibility for my life. I am ready to reprogram my subconscious. I want to know what's holding me back. I want to address it. I want to unlock my purpose and I want to live my purpose. Like I'm ready to live in freedom. I'm ready to live in abundance. I'm ready to live in authenticity and I'm ready to just get in there and address my limiting beliefs. This is for you, right? We're going to be, so it's, it's, it starts with a weekend virtual retreat. So we're going to spend two days going deep into some deep healing work. You're going to have some experts in there that are going to do some other little bonus sessions and healings and clearings. So it's working on the four light keys, all four of them, right? You're going to be supporting your physical body through breath work, through different healings. You're going to be supporting your mental body through the subconscious reprogramming, the alignment of your conscious and subconscious mind so that you can start consciously creating with precision. You're going to understand by the end of the eight weeks, you're going to each section we're going to be spending two weeks on, right? Two weeks on the physical light keys, two weeks on the mental, two weeks on the emotional, two weeks on the purpose. All right small intimate group. We're going to be having weekly deep dive calls. These calls are going to be like two hours where we're going more deep into your healing, into your purpose, into what your body is asking for, into listening to your body, activating your intuition, understanding your gifts, identifying your skills and your passions. We're going to be doing lots around soul blueprint. And it's really the, the big picture result is moving you into divine trust in yourself and your higher purpose, right? So that you're living your fucking truth. You guys, just give me a yes in the comments if you know you want to live your truth, right? Like I realized the other day, and, and this is the last thing I'll say about it. I, I had quite a chuckle at the time. I spent like years going into like, um, uh, learning how to like market and copyright and sell and all of these things. And don't get me wrong, great skill sets to have as a business owner. However, I was constantly trying to fit what I do into this box that they give you, right? This box of like, here's how you market. And they always tell you, like, you have to like list all these, like, um, you know, like these benefits. And so I was like watching other coaches when I first started out, right? And they're all selling like, abundant, the money, financial freedom. And it's like, um, or success in your business or love. Right. And I'm like watching all these things and, and they're all like, kind of like pinning all these very like tangible material results to what they do. And I was like, you know, I was always really resistant to it. So I was like, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right. I feel like that's not what I do. 
right? Telling someone, oh, you're going to make more money if you come and work with me. That doesn't feel right. Oh, you're going to have attract the partner. I'm like, but that's not what I do. I was like, what I do is so fucking beyond this. It's beyond those, those things. Don't get me wrong. You guys, those things are a benefit of this work, but I'm not talking to you just because you want to make more money or you want better health or you want a relationship or you want, um, you know, better friends or more expression. I'm talking to you guys because you're, you're the, like the, the, the select few of on the earth who are here because you want to live truth. And as a result of living truth, of course, you have love and you have friends and you have health and you have financial freedom and you have creative expression because all of those things are pieces of living truth. It's not any one of those tangible physical things. It is a much bigger picture that we are talking about. And that my friends is what the portal is. It's, it's a journey into understanding the how and why of being a conscious creator of your reality. Right. And that just like, I feel my heart expanding as I say that. So if that sounds like it is in alignment for you, and you are ready and you are willing and you are like, yes, I'm ready to invest in myself at this time and do this work, then click that button that says book a call, book the call, let's chat, we'll talk about, there are um, payment plan options, there's different options. Here's what I like to say, right? Because I understand and I wanna say that I recognize that the mind is always like, well, I wanna know the cost. Look, my approach on this is that when you have decided and committed to something like where there is a will, there is a way, right? And I am, when I know someone is committed, if we have to work out a payment option that's more personal to you, I'm happy to have that conversation. That is why I ask you guys to just book the call, get on the phone and let's fill out if it's a fit. Okay, so I look forward to chatting with those of you that I know are ready and ready to open the portal and just quantum shift. I look forward to seeing some of you in the Facebook community. I look forward to seeing you guys in my email list. Some of you will be hanging out with me on TikTok, wherever it is that we'll be hanging out. You guys, I thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here for these four, for watching the replays, for showing up, for giving yourselves fully to this. That's right, exactly, boo, you found a way to make it happen, right, you guys? Thank you. Go forth, be wildly you, have it all, bring your magic to the world, share your purpose formulas in the group as you guys are doing it. Tell me, share it in the group, I wanna hear. Use that group space, you guys, ask your questions, share your wins, make it a community, all right? I'll talk to some of you soon. I love you all. Be wild to you and have it all. Bye, everybody.